Anybody who was a part of YouTube a few years ago has reminisced about 2016 and how much of a crazy and fun ride it was to watch all of these big YouTubers go at each other's throats, actually debating and arguing like it was real life politics, except instead of discussing controversial issues, they were discussing things that were stupid enough to where you could watch from the comfort of your own laptop and laugh at it. It was a different change of pace, it was fun, it was exciting, sometimes things got a little crazy, but at the end of the day, Day, it was exhilarating and it's something that we'll never get to revisit again as you know times have changed as people have gotten more sensitive as you know rules have been instituted to prevent a channel like leafy from ever resurfacing again leafy was never banned though his channel's still up and you can go look at any of his videos occasionally one of his videos will get striked down as you'll look on social blade you'll see the overall views of his channel go down meaning that a video did get striked but it's still up there there's no reason for him to stop uploading videos he can post whenever he wants and although some speculate that by him posting content YouTube would immediately take his channel down I think that's a bit of an overreach I mean yeah you know Leafy will never be able to say certain things again but you know him just posting regular content again it's not gonna be you know an immediate suspension from the platform there is so much thirst and hunger for this guy to come back and to bring back the culture that he brought on YouTube that me throwing up a civil tweet announcing that he's not dead literally and that he donated to Billy the Fridge's stream well you can see the tweet got 18,000 likes on Twitter and this event is not something that's you know e exclusive to this one time like everybody just suddenly gets you know uh, desperate to see a return of the Lizard King many people for years now since I'd say like 2017 2018 have been clamoring for the return but I'll get into that in just a moment it wasn't just the uh, the donation that was his uh, return to YouTube he also took to his community tab um, writing you know the state of this website um, and then somebody said welcome back and he wrote yeah nah I'm good was a fun ride happy 2020 everyone kind of confirming that when it comes to making videos and content again he's pretty much done he changed his YouTube banner to get rid of the old YouTube one and he changed the bio to milk it until it's dry which is the same thing he donated to Billy the Fridge's stream if this were any dead YouTuber who did the mundane things of sending a donation or tweeting I would not be covering this, but because it's leafy, because it's this guy in particular, that's why this is such a big deal. The fact that a guy who doesn't even know how to type a message into his donation is causing this much desperation for his return should tell you something. It should tell you that people want a return to a simpler time when you could make jokes and not really get too invested into the internet to just sit back and laugh and look at things from a more casual perspective. This guy's sitting here, he doesn't realize what people are mad at Onision. That's how little he really cares about what's going on. He just shows up to a stream from a, a friend of his and just like, ah, people are so mad at Onision. Really? Why? Despite that being the number one story going on on YouTube right now. But what's funny is that something that happened when I threw up this tweet saying uh, Leafy is still around, good to see, you know, confirming the obvious, which is that no, he's not dead. Uh, I was met with a conflict of opinions. I was met with a bunch of people who were, uh, you know, d doing the hiss thing, you know, throwing snake emojis, you know, stuff like that, being like, yes, I miss this guy. He was a great part of my high school or whatever. I, we, we, me and my friends used to love watching his videos. This is really nostalgic and good to see, which is kind of funny because, you know, he was only a big thing just three or four years ago. It's not like he was a, you know, long time legend. He's, he's more of a relatively recent YouTuber. But on the other end of the spectrum, I was met people who were just sitting there being like you know he harassed children and mentally disabled people for a living lied to his own fan base multiple times tried to destroy people who used to be his best friends and brought nothing in terms of creativity and effort to the community and y'all are actually glad to have him back I was met with a lot of comments like these where people were still invested and you super against this guy who just sat, basically just sat around and you know made jokes on the internet and while it's true that, yes, some of these jokes did cause people like Tommy and C to cry, you know, an autistic man to receive death threats and things like that on the internet, should isolated events like these dictate who's allowed to make jokes online? You know, I get, I get if, you know, Leafy was, you know, a weird brand of humor that, you know, you thought was kind of lazy, you didn't get it, you thought the videos were low effort or stuff, but that wasn't the point. It was a guy who sat in his room and talked basic shit, had no fancy editing, no graphics, no, you know, uh, 
good comedic timing or whatever. He just he just turned on the mic and talked shit, basically like what I'm doing right now. But he was able to make a successful living off of it, you know, garnering multi-million subs and really bring a, a weird subculture where, you know, emo girls would like, you know, choke on water and, you know, do uh, people would do all these kinds of crazy things. You know, you had a guy like Stomity who would like drill his head in or something to, uh, you know, you would have people who would do these crazy things to grab his attention so he would make a reaction video out of it. You would have weird guys on the internet that would, um, who would make spurgy videos ranting about, you know, their mom finding their porn collection, whereas he would have Leafy, you know, make the response video and be like, man, this is fucked up, dude. This is crazy. This is weird. And then you'd have the more normie side of YouTube, you know, the Jacob Sartoriuses who would make these cringy music videos and all that. And then you'd have people like Leafy who would respond to it. The point is, is that, you know, you could look at stuff like this and be like, yeah, this is fucked up. This is crazy. You could use all kinds of language or whatever. And nobody really gave a shit at the time. It was just normal. You know, you would have the uh, weird side of YouTube. You'd have the normie side of the YouTube. And then you have the leafy, the more toxic side of YouTube. And I like that because, you know, I brought about a time where you could make videos reacting to something weird and say that it was weird and nobody would freak out. Nobody would be like, whoa, dude, you can't say that. That's messed up. That, that's too far or whatever. And yeah, there were negative occurrences like when Tommy and C would show up and uh, Leafy would make a video, you know, bashing him for his autism, uh, leading Tommy and C uh, to cry about it, you know, and uh, leading him to receive death threats or whatever. But I think events like this get kind of overshadowed. I think events like this kind of get, you know, because of things like this, now all of a sudden we can't have, you know, a YouTuber like Leafy is here because, you know, if a few people are miserable, then all of a sudden we got to cater to all of them. I'm not saying you should go around, you know, making videos just, you know, shitting on autistic people or something. But what I am saying is that, you know, let's not look at events like these, you know, isolated events and, you know, ruin the fun for everybody. I think any anybody can be made fun of. Any jokes can be made. You know, maybe there's a way to do it uh, better to uh, minimize backlash or, you know, do it in a more optical way. But the way I've always looked at it is I don't really moralize over things like this. You know, I don't really like look at this and be like, oh, this was terrible. You know, I, well, I'm so glad Leafy's gone. You know, I kind of take a back row seat view at things and I'm just like, yeah, that was kind of messed up. But, you know, it's just something that happens on the Internet. You know, the Internet is a naturally weird and toxic place. You know, might as well just spend a few jokes around and, uh, and collect cash while doing it. Because why not? You can see I wrote back here. I said, harass for a living is a bit of a stretch. And yeah, he has backstep Keemstar, but he's done far worse if we want to play morals. So I really don't care. I think a lot of people think that, you know, uh, you have to follow YouTubers because they're good people. You know, you have to watch YouTubers because they're... Uh, they're great guys who are, you know, really out there to look for your best interests. I don't really view it that way. Yeah, I watch a lot of shitty people, um, who they themselves would even admit that they're shitty people, but if they're entertaining, f fuck it, you know, might as well, and you know, enjoy and uh, consume that type of content. I was also met with this comment here. He says, yeah, he was terrible and all, but it was more fun back then. Honestly, hate Twitter sometimes, which is a pretty dramatic view, you know. I think I wrote back to this guy uh, saying something like, um, it's so funny how so many people uh, dramatize Leafy and make it out like he was the spawn of Satan and you were genuinely fearful of him back then. He was just a dude that made jokes. I don't know. It's kind of fun for me to look back and, you know, kind of see the difference of opinion here. You're certainly entitled to what you want to think. But in my opinion, I don't choose to, you know, only subscribe to people who I think I've, I personally vetted as good people. I don't choose to sit here and be like, oh, because of, you know, a few, you know, off color jokes, you know, we need to just sit here and, you know, pretend like this is the worst thing ever. You know, I take a, a, a backseat view and, and I honestly look back and enjoy that period of time where you could sit there and just be a little edgy, just be a little loose. And for the most part, people were chill with it. People were fine with it. Sure, you had the shitheads who would send, you know, death threats because, oh, Leafy made a video on this guy. So obviously we got to, you know, take it to the next level. But 999 times out of a thousand, you know, death threats on the Internet never transpire into anything that would uh, jeopardize the safety of the person receiving the threat online. I don't know, man. I guess I could just sum up this video by just saying... I want my edgy memes back, all right? <laughs> I, I want I want that time back where you can do whatever you want. You could highlight some crazy person and make all kinds of jokes. And, you know, everybody was just kind of down with it. I think this, you know, overly uh, sanitized and uh, demonetizable culture that we have nowadays where if you make a gay joke, you're suddenly homophobic and stuff like that. I'm just sick of it, you know? I want a guy like Leafy who says, fuck that. I'll do whatever I want. And... 
And, you know, shitty things might happen, but that's just what's going to happen online. You know, deal with things on their own. Don't look at something that happened that was bad and be like, okay, because of this bad thing with Tommy and C, now we can't have a Leafies here anymore. You know, I'm here for the show. And if things are getting stale, well, I'm out. And besides, when it comes to Tommy and C 2010, they all worked that out. Leafy removed the video. He apologized. And um, Tommy and C 2010 ended up gaining 100,000 subscribers from that whole situation. Not that it, you know, uh, co corrects what originally happened. You know, you, sh you probably shouldn't take a video of an autistic guy and shit on them and stuff like that. You know, maybe do a little digging, find out, oh, wait, this guy's autistic. You know, maybe I should lay off on the jokes or whatever. But it wasn't this great tragedy where this guy was had his life ruined over a Leaf Easier video. And I think that's what a lot of people remember Leaf Easier as. This guy who would just ruin your life in the time span of just a day, which simply never happened. Anyway, that's all I got to say for this video. My name's Ogier FC. If you enjoyed it, hit like, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, everyone.